scientists found out that other companies actually have really good miniatures too, not only Games Workshop. So let's dive in and paint one of them with a buttload of Chimera paints. Hey guys and welcome to the bear and the brush and as I said today we will be painting a mini from another company than Games Workshop. I originally planned this video for other games April but I guess it's December now and um, due to life altering circumstances I kind of missed that but I want to do this video really bad so I'm doing it now. We are looking at Infinity from Corvus Belly and I got this nice little wolf dude that I want to paint up and I got a lot of camera paints that I haven't tested uh, we're gonna use them today. For a better understanding of the volumes I started this mini with a nice wide zenithal but I didn't prime it on the base because the base was already done. Uh, this base was actually made by my daughter who briefly visited me on stream and I will check if I find a VOD of that one so I can link it for you guys. I don't know if this still exists but she was in my stream and she built some really cool street bases with me. So for Chimera because you need to thin them and you need to mix them and you want some nice long working time with your expensive paints I suggest you use a wet palette and I'm setting my wet palette up right now and after that first initial coats I want to also test if they dry brush well so if the paints dry brush well and if I can do some dry brushing on the model as well. Let's start with a base coat in black for the pants and the bluish gray for the fur. The good thing about camera paints is that they are super pigment dense and super high quality so you can easily thin them down and they will still cover really really well. This means you can load your brush, you can use a big brush and you can get down a lot of base coats in a single swoop. Some colors like in every color range have some issues but I will show that later on. For now let's just say they cover pretty well and you can load your brush quite excessively and it flows really nice off the brush and onto your miniature. But what about dry brushing? Well actually these paints are amazing for dry brushing because they are so pigment dense you could work with a slightly moist brush and you will always get some pigments and it's really predictable to work with. In this case I dry brushed over the fur and gave like a slight dry brushing over the gun just to keep the dark shadow areas. Then I took a smaller dry brush with a lighter color and started to highlight the face the shoulders and other parts of the miniature that actually get light from the light source, in this case the sun. For some of the areas I took a light flesh tony color and went on and dry brushed this on the mini too. I wanted to highlight the ends of the fur and especially the face and all the fur that is really exposed to the sun, like all the fine strains on the end the tail, on the shoulders and the face. The face always should be your highlight point so it's a good idea to highlight it more and add a few more colors to make it interesting. Actually this painting video isn't quite different from all the other videos you've seen on YouTube. Layer, glaze, layer, glaze, blah -de blah -de blah And I think there are people that could explain this a lot better to you. But I'm super hyped about doing all the mixes with a camera paint because having single pigment colors is amazing. They are so predictable when you mix on them and you don't get any strange kind of brown tones or whatever when you mix them together. I also tested glazing and translucency and as you can see here you can thin it down a lot and it doesn't break apart and if you put it on your finger you can see all the lines you can see other colors through it feathers it glazes really well it absolutely behaves like you would want it from a paint from a high quality paint this is what you should be expecting so the next step was trying to make use of my zenithal highlight and all the shadow areas i kept 
on the miniature. So I thinned it down and I glazed it over the parts like the armor and this jacket that I wanted to be green. And this worked super well. The paint didn't break apart and I could still see the shadow in the crevices and deeper areas of the mini. Also standard layering went like a charm. I thinned down the paint, I mixed in more and more of a yellow to get to a lighter green and it worked like a charm. But the orange, and you know, yellows and oranges always give you some trouble. And in this case, it's the same for Camaro. The orange does not cover as good as I wanted to. Of course, I could have repainted the trim on his jacket before, but... But the yellow. If you build up a yellow from the orange, or if you build up a yellow from a white, it works really well. So I highlighted the trim on his jacket to a nice yellow tone and I gave his teeth a dirty yellow look. But I wasn't done testing the orange. So I took my brush, loaded a dark orange and highlighted and oftentimes overbrushed the brown leather parts to give it a nice highlight on the leather. And I have to say this worked pretty well. It looks quite extreme when it's wet but since it's so translucent it turned out really well and it looks like old leather that has been to a lot of bad weather that has been used a lot it worked out great i'm super happy with it and i have to say now i know when i want to start an orange i will do it from a brown important part too is just adding a few highlights in white here and there for example, reflection on his sunglasses. And of course, I've tried non-metallic metal again for the millionth time. And I will get that so someday I will get it. <laughs> well, the main reason my non-metallic metal often does not look that good is because I always try to cheese it. In this case, I used a black undercoat and I used the bluish gray that I had on top of it and I just added white highlights and I did not blend them I feathered them out a bit and then I used something um, to blend it all together I used a lot of glaze medium and water and thinned down some black chimera paint and then glazed it all over the parts that I wanted to look like metal and it did work on some parts and it didn't work on other parts and maybe I need to stop trying to cheese non-metallic metal but maybe i will never do it i don't know we will see if you know a good guide let me know there's only one thing that really bothers me when using camera paint i know there are some differences in consistency but if i look at my vallejo paints they are mostly the same consistency if i look at my monument hobby paints they are mostly the same consistency. Artist paints from scale are like all the damn freaking consistency. But Camera is varying from you just emptied the whole bottle to squeeze me harder, daddy. <laughs> daddy, chill. Sorry. Uh, but it is like that. You know, you ha really have to choke out the bottle to get like one drop of paint out and the other one is like touching it and it squirts all over the place. That kind of bugs me. Well, guys, this was fun. I really enjoyed the paint and I really enjoyed that gorgeous model. I know there are hundreds or thousands of tutorials from people showing you how to paint step by step layer glaze, as I said before. But I hope I could show you some really cool new models you could try to paint and some really cool new paint. The paint is absolutely amazing and the minis from Corvus Belly are insanely good. Uh, this one was even uh, made of pewter, by the way, which I really enjoy working with. With a huge shout out to my patrons, it is time for a reveal.
If you guys enjoyed this video, you know what I always say, hit those pesky buttons down below, like, comment, subscribe, really helps out the channel, even share or hit the bell button, everything helps. If you want to, I got a Patreon and I got merch, both linked down in the description and also linked the best Discord on the planet, the Paint Water Soup Discord, and you're always welcome to join. And I hope to see you there. And I really hope to see you next time here on The Bear and the Brush. Bye, guys.